It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. Hey, and welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. This is Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor. And tonight we have reconvened our panel. Hello, panel. Hello. Hello. Successful Hello. stock market traders and investors. And on this particular episode, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of trading options of options. So I just want to say hello to everybody. Brian, welcome back. Hey, Tyrone. Uh, Andre Blake, you've been with us several times. Yes, it's a pleasure. Melissa, how are you? I'm great. Thank uh, you. Okay, you're welcome. And Zane. Hey. All right. Now, let's get right into it. You've all uh, learned how to trade leaps options successfully instead of shorter dated options. Now, a lot of people say you can make a lot of money trading 90-day call options in the Wealthy Investor Program. We tend to trade options that have at least 12 months before they expire. Brian, we'll go around and we'll start with you. Actually, everybody will be in on this one. What do you like about trading leaps options? Number one is it gives you more time to be right. About the direction about, of the stock. Yes, about the direction of the stock. And it won't expire for at least a year. So you have time to be right about your idea that stock is going to go up and you'll be able to make a profit on that option. Right. Andre, what do you like about trading leaps? The same, you know, time to be right. What's really nice is that if 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 your bias on a stock is is bullish, over time the stock should move forward. If 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 you're trading something that 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 fits our criteria of having four quarters of top line revenue growth, there's a high likelihood that stock is going to rise. So, having this instrument that you own where you didn't have to pay full price for the stock that that you actually purchased from money that you made from writing covered calls, it, it's a win-win. Yes, it is. Uh, Melissa, you trade options, right? I do. Uh huh. What do you like about trading them? Well, I don't have to like. Sometimes it's 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 great because you're not like you don't have to necessarily buy the full security. You can buy the leap, and then you make a when you make the profit on it. You're you're return on investment is a lot higher. Yes, it is in percentage terms, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Zane? Basically what Andre and um, Brian had already said, if you look at a stock, say a month or three month chart, and it's going, hmm, but if you step back and look at a year, what happened in the last year, and then cut that up in the quarters, it's like, well, if I had bought 10 shares of it when it was this price a year ago, look where it could be. And if the stock and the, um, the uh, top line revenue supports that, well, let me jump in now and I'll put $10 in this particular leaps and watch it move up. And then even further, by taking, um, being able to choose which delta you want, now you actually know how much money the stock is going to make when it moves. You mean how much money the options are going to make? I'm sorry, how much money the options are going to make when the, the stock moves the leaps. Yes. Now, if you're new to stock market trading, this is going to be an advanced discussion, okay? <laughs> but for some of you who like actually trading options, you have to remember that options carry a unique kind of risk to them. You can make a lot of money very quickly, but you can also lose a lot of money very quickly. So we're going to try to discuss uh, options trading in simple terms, right? Um, but remember, the people who I'm talking to have advanced to this level. Melissa, a lot of people ask me, why do you teach off the Delta 50? Like when I'm first teaching options, I teach people to trade Delta 50 leaps options um, because the derivative math is easier. In other words, if a stock moves a dollar, then I know that that option on a theoretical basis is going to go up 50 cents per share or $50 per con contract. When you trade options, do you lean towards a Delta 50 or do you go a little further in the money, Delta 60, Delta 70? I think it depends. You know, I try to stay around the 60, the 60, 50 um, area. That's where I try to stay. But, you know, I know in class we, we do the Delta 50 because it's just easier to, to do the drills around it. And is there a, uh, Andre, Delta 50, Delta 60, 70, where are you most of the time? Uh, most of the time around 50, 60. I think, you know, like Melissa was saying, if you have a stock that's a fast mover, yeah. sometimes I'll come out of the money a little bit because that transition from out of the money into the money yes. is can be very lucrative. Yes, it can be very lucrative. Zane? It depends on also how many other positions, how many other leaps I have in that stock. So if I already have a couple of contracts at the 50 Delta, 60 Delta, 
Um, I might go a little deeper. I might go in the money, out of the money. It depends on what else I have in my portfolio. But starting out, just because the math is just simpler, um, just in the money for me. Okay, in best. the money. But what Delta do Delta you Delta 50-ish. Yeah, Delta 50-ish. Anybody ever buy a Delta 80 option, one yes. that's deep in the money? Mm-hmm. I have. And why did you do that? Um, usually the bid-ask spread was a little smaller. And um, I like more intrinsic value. In the option in the itself. option based on the underlying security. So right. uh, that's I, I haven't done that in a long time. When I first started trading options, I found it a sense of security in that. In and, that Delta and 80. Delta 80. Because mm-hmm. it was so much intrinsic value. But it also makes the option very heavy. Mm-hmm. And it won't move as fast as, as another option that has less intrinsic value. So I haven't done that in a while. But I have done that. And I had made money. Yes. Andre. What I like about trading the leaps is... Um, You know, you can purchase this leap and set a trade trigger. And I think we were talking briefly a moment in class or something. And if you're in your car or you're on the train or whatever it is and your phone goes bloop, bloop, bloop. And it's like, oh, wow, I just made some money. It's like taking candy from a baby and making money in your sleep, however you want to, you know, whatever metaphor you choose to use. But it's, it's, it's really a wonderful way to live. Right. Now, here's the problem. A lot of people who start trading options say, why should I ever trade the shares? Hmm. Because the options move so fast. I refer to it as fast, sexy money. Why don't I just trade options from here on out? Now, you're all cringing in your own way. Uh, Melissa, why are you cringing? Um, Well, you know, I think it's good to have a, I think you got to have a mix in your portfolio. And um, I think you've got to have some securities and, and things that you're building positions in and you're getting div- dividends and all that. And, you know, when you lose money on an option, it's pretty painful. You know, I mean, I think you teach us a way that's very smart and conservative, but you are going to lose money. And when you lose money on an option, there's it's like evaporates. Yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. Yes. Mm-hmm. Andre? What I like about it is if you use your covered call income to purchase your leaps, and you tell yourself, okay, if this leap hits this price or the market pulls back so much that my leap drops in to say 50% of its value, I want out because you're still using mark- money that the market gave you. Correct. So you don't want to lose all of your money. That is correct. Goes back to discipline. Yes. Greed and options trading. Oof. Um, who wants to speak to greed? I'll take that one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to be honest, I, I don't think I've been that greedy, but what I do notice is a lot of the new people in the class, and you just see them going, wow, I can make so much money doing this. I can make this. If I just add another zero here, or maybe two, bang. And I'm like, no. And I see them in the class, and I, I kid you not, I've gone over to them, one or two of them, two in particular that you guys know. I said, hey, check this out. You can make a lot of money here, but until you really understand what you're doing, go slow. Don't, don't, don't all the, don't go full in. Yeah. It's just, it's a little date, especially because you don't know what's going on. And you did pay this guy to take his class and kind of do what he says. It's not a bad idea. And the people that don't th- usually come in with some kind of unrealistic dream, you can have your dreams, but if you have a $2,000 account, you're not going to make a million dollars at the end of the year. It's, it's not going to happen. And trying to jumpstart it that fast, slow and steady is the way to go. Well, sometimes when I'm teaching options, I tell people, I'm giving you the keys to a Ferrari, right? Could you do me a favor and go 40 miles an hour, right? Now, who wants the keys to a Ferrari and and drive it 40 miles an hour? You drive a Hyundai 40 miles an hour. A Ferrari is built for speed. And one of the things that I've realized is you have to let people or I have to let people take that journey. Even though I say only trade with one contract as options move really quickly, people think of greed is a very interesting experience. And it's easy to be seduced. As one student told me, she said, Tyrone, it didn't feel like I was being greedy at the time. It just felt like I was just doing a trade, but they were in too deep. Uh, How did you learn the lessons? Let's go around on this one. We'll start with Andre. How did you learn that lesson not to load up on options and still trade shares? Because I lost my money. (laughs) Okay, how much did you lose to learn that lesson? Oh, wow. How much did it cost you? How much did it really? Yeah, let's go with real numbers so that people real numbers. It probably cost me about five grand. Okay, and and uh, everybody's like, you got a light. (laughs) (laughs) Only five thousand (laughs) dollars. 
<laughs> what did you do, Rob? I believe it's important mm-hmm. to make mistakes early because if when your account is smaller and you make a mistake, you feel it. Yeah. And then there's something that happens. Yes. You go, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Right. Or when you do choose to get back into leaps, you're a little bit more conservative because in so much as you understand the power, you can also understand the pain. Okay. And when you're clear about that and, and, and you step into the trade, I don't know, maybe with a little bit, a little bit of trepidation can go a long way. You know, so just, again, don't be greedy. Right. Like, 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 like everyone has said, if you just, you know, tread lightly, it'll come to you, you know, and, and just, and just kind of let it be. Melissa, have you ever lost money trading options? Oh, yes. How much? Um, probably about 5000 too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at these guys. They're like, he's a lightweight over here. Oh, probably more. I don't know. I have to. Ca- I have to probably calculate. More, I, mean, um, you know. I have to calculate it. Yeah. Yes. But let's go with the five thousand dollar loss. Okay. Okay. Ouch. Did that hurt? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My account's not that big. Do you remember what you did to cause that five thousand dollar loss? It was very early on when I was learning options. Um, when I made that first profit, I was like, "Ooh, this is good." Yes, it is. And I was like, "Okay, let me get another." One. You know, and then and then you kind of keep going with it. And you think the stock's going to just go off into affinity and keep going. And the next thing you know, when you it pulls back, it's like, "Oh shoot, I just lost all of what I just made." It's not any different than going to Vegas. Right. Like, that's where it's like I, I, I you really you have said to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> shoot yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. I I have never been a person who's afraid to lose money. And I try to identify with people who are because I feel a little bit like as first of all, as long as and you guys know a 10, a 10 month formula that I Mm -hmm. always teach. If you lose money on the options, you should be able as a cover call writer to make that up within 10 months. So therefore, you would never invest more than an option than you're capable of earning on a cover call. Right. So I've never been one of those people that sat around worried about losing money because I just always felt like I'll get it back from the market. Mm. Zane, have you ever lost money on an option? Yeah. How much? I have, I think, four accounts that I'm trading. So this one particular trade I put on across all four accounts that one time, I think it might have been about $60,000. And I think the main problem was I knew what to do if everything went well. I didn't know what to do if it didn't go well. Okay. So I didn't have the shares to help me out. Okay. To make that money back. And, um, you know, Melissa likes to do uh, trapeze work on her off time. They don't just throw you up on the bar and say, good luck. They teach you how to fall. They teach you, you make sure there's a net. There's a whole bunch of other background stuff. So you just don't go full in like I did and not know, or at least look down to see that there's a net or know that <laughs> what do I do when I the guy has his arms out and I miss him? What do I do? And I didn't have that in place. Okay. And that was my mistake. I'm like, all right, trade one option, trade two. When you go into a third of your account at the time and just, okay, that was a mistake. And, okay. and so I don't do that anymore. Okay. And, I, and also, I don't think there were um, leaps that I were trading either. They okay. were a little shorter. Mm-hmm. They were like three or four months, but oh, yeah. they weren't 12. Here's the other thing that I, I have noticed, because there are certain strategies, or there was in the market three years ago, where you could mix a shorter dated option with a longer dated option, and as long as the volatility was there, you were fine. I did teach that strategy. And a lot of people, when it got really good, they forgot about the longer dated option. And then they said, your strategy doesn't work, Tyrone. You lost me all that money. I hate you. And then I say, how did you? Well, it did go around, right? I mean, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think some people were calling me a unicorn. Where's my unicorn or something? There was some joke about a unicorn. Unicorn at that time. math. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and then I would say, well, how many front month calls did you have? And, how many, lo- right. and <laughs> right. how many longer dated contracts did you have? One. One. <laughs> right. And it's kind of like, oh, and so you mean volatility shut down and you didn't know how to trade that? Exactly. But here's the thing that's really interesting about your experience, Zane. Uh Uh-oh. And no, this is what I find very interesting. When you trade options, the lessons that you learn are almost like the lessons that you learn in life. Mm -hmm. If you are in the stock market just to make a whole lot of money quickly, you're going to take yourself out of the game. Because obviously, you've stayed and you've learned some lessons, Mm -hmm. which I think is very parallel to your career choice as a musician. 
because there are ups and downs. You don't get to be a successful musician, a successful astronaut, a successful trader, a successful surgeon without some form of losses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, because as a surgeon, you... I've killed a couple of people. Yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's what caused you to go back to music. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn from those losses, Zane? That there's, you set up a trade and you need to know what happens if it goes right and what happens if it goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Or not the way I plan, not necessarily wrong. And what is my plan B? And there was no plan B. What, uh, how do I set up the trade? Um, should I be buying 30 contracts of something if I don't have the money to cover? There's a whole bunch of things in place. So you, you're just moving and you, um, with blinders on and not looking up and looking at your entire account. I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't really know what the market's going to do. I'm making an educated guess, but that's still a guess. I don't know. And so if it goes left or right, I have a plan for left or right, not just we're going straight. And it's always going to go straight and it's always going to go up. That's not reality. Uh, Brian, did you want in on that? Yeah, well, I I was going to say I lost quite a bit of money on options actually last year. And I didn't think I was being greedy. I think I was being aggressive. (laughs) It's more like Yes, and that's how greed starts. It is. It is. (laughs) And um, I would say that I learned, you know, sometimes you do do need to learn lessons. And I decided when I lost the money, it was $15,000, by the way, brush myself off. Learn from the experience, just like I do in business. I mean, I've lost money in business. I made money in business, and I say, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Now I I know what to do differently, and and then you move on. And now I'm making money again. So it's sometimes you really have to watch your feelings. Yes, in very the stock much so. market. It's and I'm really trying to apply what I learned in business about it's it's numbers. It's not my feelings. So you really got to watch it. It's that's my. My, my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Andre? I think it goes back to something that you also say in class a lot is, you know, if you cannot make back this money in 10 months, don't put on the trade. Right. It's literally that simple. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times people will get caught up in the fast, sexy money or that shorter call that might maybe three months, if you will. It may cost you less and you think you're going to make all this money, but it actually ends up costing you a lot more right? when you're wrong. right? So like Zane was saying, it's all in, you make your money when you set up the trade. right? What happens if I'm wrong? right? I constantly ask myself that question. Yes. If I'm wrong, will I make money? Great, I'll put this trade on. right? If I don't know how to do that, I'll sit on the side and I'll wait. right? Or I'll trade something else. right? Or just not trade. Right. I wanted to ask you about your losses first, because now we're going to talk about some great trades that you put on. But right before, and we're going to talk about real numbers. I think people really need to hear like real numbers of just some of your great trades. But I will say this, and the markets always change. There was a time when Apple stock, when Steve Jobs was alive, could do no wrong. And people thought that they, and people made, became millionaires off of Apple stock. And if you were trading options at the same time, that just amplified that. But when that trade was gone, it was hard to let go of. Hmm. And it was almost if telepathically there were some people trying to force the stock higher. This trade must continue because I just don't want it to go anywhere. Um, Has anybody ever had that experience with something that you're trading and it's just so good, you never want that trade to go anywhere? Netflix. Yes, we're all (laughs) trading something right now, right? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, great trade that you can remember, Zane. Actually, I had no, it was a Netflix trade 100 years ago when it wasn't a trade that we did in the class. And um, I put the trade on and I wrote a put. Okay. And the earnings came out and everyone was expecting earnings to be bad. They had just decided we're going to um, go into a live streaming content. So what do you guys know about creating original content? Nothing. You don't know the earnings are going to be horrible. The next day, the earnings come out and they're wonderful. And the stock still dropped. Yes. And that was my idiot move that I had no brain. There was nothing I did that made sense. But that was, I think, percentage-wise, the biggest trade I've ever had in my life. Right. And how did you feel? It was a lovely thing, but it was still a little head-scratching because I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) What exactly did I just do? (laughs) Kind of. And that was several years ago, you know. But that was like, ooh, ooh, that was a big one. And then it was last month, which was... I'm still kind of shaking like... In a good way. 
very good way. Yes, in a very good way. Uh, Melissa, best trade as an option? It was Apple earnings in April. Right. Um, I bought a put for the first time in my life, and I know we're not supposed to buy puts, but I bought one. It was just ridiculous, the profit I made, though, on it. It was like, I think I made like $3,000 in two days. Yeah, isn't it great? When it goes right, it's like the greatest thing. Yeah, yeah like I put 1600 in, I went to 5000 so then I made like three, yeah, like 3000 on the trade. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow. You guys all, it's, it's interesting, because you're all sort of kind of using fundamentals at the same time. Like I'm hearing some earnings trades, right, which are really great because volatility is there. So you're not even with that. You're not just blindly trading Mm-mm. options. You're, no, you're using some strategy around some event. Andre, best options trade? Uh, similar, I believe it was a Netflix trade, and it was around earnings, and I set up a straddle. And explain what that is really quickly. Uh, when you buy a call and a put. Yes. If if I remember correctly, earnings came out. The stock shot up. I got out on the call side with what had to be, I think, I think I doubled my money. And then I think a day or two later, the stock dropped. Yes. And I, I didn't sell out of my put and was able to capture money on the downside as well. Yes. That I was like, okay, lightning struck. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right. I had my Jesus moment and that was it. You know, so, uh, yeah. Brian, best options trade? It was about a year ago on Netflix leaps when we were doing the um, – Buying the fifteen hundred dollar leap, whatever the delta was okay. that you had taught us in class, right. I made four thousand dollars in, in uh, one month, mm-hmm. and that's why I became aggressive after that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the beginning, mm-hmm. and you probably would have been right about that, but we had some catalysts that pulled things back. Right, yeah, yeah. that's what happened. For me, um, I I used to trade. Um, I loved trading the cues mm-hmm. uh, when Apple was hot. Easily five thousand dollars per trade sometimes multiple times in a week and boy if you don't feel like king of the world right there something's really wrong with you Mm. but the cool thing is because i'm the teacher i knew that that trend would end at some point so it's not like i got addicted to it is trading addicting yes can be yeah yeah Uh, why do you say that um well because like especially with options i think you really have to you have to get some discipline around it and um because the money does come, and when it does come, it's really fast. Mm-hmm. But it's it's like it can also be, I mean, like a drug. It's like when it when you lose the money too, you can lose the money really bad. So, right. Yeah. Right. So I think it takes trying to find some balance with it. Which goes back to what I was saying about watching your feelings. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. Because you can get very emotional as a trader yeah. and want to load up on something that you really feel is like a sure thing. Andre, you want to speak to that? Yeah, the one that cracks me up is – when you you purchase a leaps a leaps call and uh, the stock goes up and you see some profit sitting there and you don't take oh it. I love yep. this yep. I always yeah. say if that option Man, is green, it's gonna run it's gonna right. run right. happened to me last week okay yeah so you know I'm like ah, I'll let it go I'll wait I'll wait another five bucks right and that money goes it's away gone. yes, yes. <laughs> all right. This is something I teach an options course online. For those of you who want to learn more, go to thewealthyinvestor.net. And when that course actually opens, you'll get an email and you can learn about this. Now, this is something that also comes up. And I know people disagree with me. And I know whether you're in the live class or you do it online. Here's the controversy. The 1% update. I get more questions about why buy that leaps option when the stock is up 1%. Now, I'll explain it here. It's because you're coming, the idea is you're coming in when the big money is coming into the stock. Now, if it's an upward trending stock, uh, you don't have to worry about the long term trend because if you have 14 months to be right about a direction, you're going to eventually get out of that leaps with a profit. But the reason for waiting for the 1% update is you want to come in when the hedge funds are coming in. You want to come in when the college endowments are coming in. Does anybody have a problem with the 1% update? Now is your time to give voice to it on a podcast, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> Melissa. I didn't, I didn't understand it at first when you did it. Um, and I was kind of, it took me a while to kind of get my head around it. But it was the day trade thing when you said to do it at 345 in the afternoon. When to the, purchase when, the option at 345 yeah. if the stock is up at 1%. Yeah. And, um, and then the next morning I'm out because that momentum from the day before moves right into the morning the next morning. And then boom, you're out the next morning. So that's been something that's really worked out for me. But you mean me I've while. persuaded you to, yes. to the... To but it the, took me a while to kind of get my head around it. Okay. 
Because why? It seemed to not make sense initially. It didn't make sense. Okay. It didn't make sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, then riding the momentum into the next morning. You might as well, Brian. Well, it kind of goes back to what Zane was saying earlier. If we're, we're paying you to teach us what to do, <laughs> <laughs> why don't we do what you what you know to do? Right. I mean, uh, stock market's one game and there's a thousand ways to play it. So we're here to learn your way to play it. Yes. So, But people still learn my way and disagree. Yes, which I've Which is it. very respectful, but... Uh, part of options trading, would anybody agree with me on this, is frequency. Once you understand how to buy something in tandem with the stock that goes up exponentially, you want to do that as many times as possible, yeah. right? So that's why I always say to you guys, if the option goes green, sell it. You could always take profit and reset another trade. But if you don't do that, you're holding on to something. So, so, so someone in, uh, in the live class in New York, because the program is the oldest in New York, and she's a lovely lady, and you all know who she is. Okay, So she says to me with her hands on her hips, Tyrone, I don't obey that 1% update. And then I say, well, how many times did you sell that particular leaps option in a month? And she may say three times, and I can say six times. Because every time there was a 1% update and I had a profit, I took it. Right, which means I can go back with either a larger contract size, but I'm in the habit of always taking profits. Do you guys agree with this idea of frequency? And it's fine. It's like I'm the teacher. You don't have to say yes to everything. But Mm -hmm. does everybody get that there really is this notion of how many times I can buy and sell this option? Sure. Right. In a month and take profits. I liken it to a party, you know, so the one percent up day is say, let's say a party starts at eight o'clock. Right. Mm-hmm. If if you come in on the one percent up day, it's like you got to the party at eight fifteen, eight thirty, and it's just starting to get good. And the next morning is like nine o'clock when the party's booming. Right. And you're there, you're at the party, you're having a great time. If you don't take the money, it's as if you stayed at the party until midnight when everybody else has <laughs> left. <laughs> right. You stayed. And you're long. standing there by yourself. Right. And you're the only one standing there left with your drink that's turned to ice water. And you're like, okay, what happens now? Right. When you're there, enjoy it and get out. Right. You got to know when to leave. Yes. That's the trick. That's the trick. Especially when you see something flying around and someone's like, I got $10 on that. I got $4. I got whatever. It's green. It's X amount of dollars more than you had the day before. Take that and leave. And that's been my personal problem, watching something looking for 2% or whatever the it is and mm-hmm. just you're profitable you've covered all the fees and you still have money take it and go yeah see that's me and then when you have that stock that's extremely volatile and Brian and I went into this the other day and he said um, yo man I, I wish I had hung on to that for another hour because it would have done X <laughs> and I said dude you got out you made your money tomorrow we going back in tomorrow to fight another day. And that's been my problem with my, um, in the beginning, not having the success I wanted with the leaps, waiting and waiting. And it was green, and I watched it jump two or $300 in a matter of hours, just mm-hmm. not even an hour, one hour. And I'm going, mm-hmm. really, dude, you could have had, it was up $1,000, and now it's zero again right? in 15 minutes. Yes. And, I, and some of those stocks that trade before <laughs> um, opening, and you see what the pre-market is doing. You're like, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> Boom, and no. Right. Yep. And so you, it's, if I can get $100 every day on X stock, take the $100 and go. Take it. Exactly. Anybody use leaps for a longer time horizon other than just like uh, 30 days or two weeks? Yes. Okay. So, Brian, you've held leaps for what, three I, months? Well, I did. I've practiced what you taught us about the Delta 80 or Q to Q. Mm-hmm. I did that with Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I held it for. Ooh, yeah. very nice. Yeah, so I made a nice profit. And I only had one leap. I just wanted to try it. Right, and right. It, it was nice. Yeah, nice and, profit. Yeah, congratulations. I'm not a huge fan of holding options during earnings. Does anybody agree with me on that one? Well, you don't know what's going to happen. No, right. I mean, you know, right. and if your option is up 45% and Wall Street doesn't like the earnings and the stock drops seven bucks. Wouldn't it be better to have that option in your pocket? Mm-hmm. I mean, that profit in your pocket? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, options on stock splits. Anybody have a experience with that? I did well with that with Starbucks two years ago. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Then I didn't try it ever, ever again. I just okay. said, <laughs> well, we haven't had the kind of market that really, I mean, in a roaring bull market, everybody's right about everything. Nike. Right? Nike, yes. I had a whole, I'm like, woke up like, what, 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 what happened? Right. <laughs> why, why, when did I buy that? I must have made a mistake, you know, but yeah, a whole bunch of stock and a whole bunch of options overnight. Lovely. And, but there was also a concept that you taught like, all right, so the stock split two for one. Basically, you have the one pencil broken in half. Yes. And that was another concept that I had to get in my head to understand, wow, you have 200 shares of something now. Yeah, but it was $100 yesterday and now it's $50. So you have 200 shares, but nothing really moved right. other than now I can trade two contracts as opposed to the one. So there's a couple of different things at play here that you have to understand and take a minute to know before you go forth and you know make your millions. Well, here's a question for the round table. Uh, if I had you pick a target, now we have covered call writing in our case, which is how we finance in whole or in part a longer dated option because the market's giving us money to take that risk. And I love that. Maybe that's why I don't have the fear because because <laughs> I got a portion of that money for the market anyway. Uh, if I could give you an ideal target in terms of option profits that you'd like to start making per month when the market goes bullish, Zane, your number would be what? And just options trading. It's tricky for me because I have a couple of different accounts. Pick one account. On just options profits? Just options profits alone. I go, I'd say 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. Melissa? Mm, Right now, 2,000. If you could make 10,000, I'm sorry, 2,000 exclusively just trading options, you'd be happy with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Andre? I'd say two to five. Two to 5,000 a month? Mm -hmm. Why two to 5,000? Just to give myself some wiggle room. Okay, all right. I like like a little wiggle room. Okay, what does that mean, wiggle room? If my covered call income mm-hmm. is in such that could cover the purchase of the number of leaps that I could buy to 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 achieve that number, there's my wiggle room. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. Brian? $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month in just option profits. For me, I'm comfortable with $25,000 a month in just option profits. It's, I don't, I just. Well, I'm the teacher, right? Yes. Okay. I'm thinking weird. I'm asking, looking for 10. I'm <laughs> no, 25,000 a month. That's cool. But you don't always get it. Not because you're not a skilled player. It has to be the right setup, right? I mean, I was on a softball team for a little while. And one of the things you learn in softball, you're supposed to learn, is you can't swing at everything. Mm-hmm. Right. So when conditions are right, twenty five thousand dollars a month that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or every 10 months in options. That's fine. But only when the conditions are right. Uh, OK, we're coming to the end of this episode, but I want to go around and uh, two pieces of advice you would give someone, uh, Brian, if they wanted to learn how to trade options successfully. Clearly, you've lost and you've won. So your two pieces of advice would be what? Do the analysis to make sure that, that, that fundamentally the underlying security, the earnings are there to support the stock to rise if you, you know, your bias is bullish long term. Buy at least a Delta 50 option and sell it at a profit the minute you say, I wonder if, <laughs> and get out and take it. And take that profit, right? Andre, two pieces of advice for someone who says, I think I want to learn options trading. Always buy a leaps, not a shorter call. And uh, when it's green, take it. Okay, take that profit, which is a sell to close. Is that right? All right, uh, Melissa? I'd say go slow. Um, Start with maybe one contract and get comfortable with it and then build contracts as you feel more comfortable. And yes, leaps, definitely leaps. Yeah. Um, So you have some time to to be right. Okay, Zane? I agree with Melissa. Um, Slow. You don't know what you're doing right now. You're going to make a mistake. So figure it out. So move slow first, one contract, two at the most. But more importantly, have a plan. You know, I'm buying this and hoping to sell it at X. If it goes south, what am I going to do? And have a plan. That's it. Have a plan and start slow. Yeah. And and for me, like the way we trade options, we only trade on companies that are fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. So this idea of going out, you know, trading is buying an option on a stock that you have a feeling about. Are you Uh-oh. kidding me? Uh-oh. You want to make sure that Wall Street actually likes that stock, that it's a fundamental, fundamentally strong. And I think if it's in the Dow, in the S&P, that's half the battle right there uh-huh. because you're going with the names that are already established instead of trying to buy a leaps option on a marijuana stock. Have we ever talked about that? Let the trend yeah, you, be your friend. That Let the trend be your friend. Hey, listen, thank you all so much for coming back and talking a little options, both profits and losses. 
I have a hunch that you guys are going to do really, really well moving forward. And here's my feeling. Because you had that big loss. Yep. And that cools your jets down. And then you really learn real technique. Mm -hmm. So we're going to check in with you. Will you all come back in three years from now and let me know how you all you do it? Sure. (laughs) After you you build your multiple homes across the world. Sure. We'll call Uh, in from Maui. Yes, call us from Maui. Call me from Maui. Kauai. Kauai. Everybody's going to Hawaii. That seems to be the choice. Where my kids are. (laughs) Okay, that's where your kids are. Thanks, everybody, for coming in today. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, listen, this is Tyrone Jackson saying if you want to learn how to trade options, all you have to do is head over to the wealthyinvestor.net sign up for my stock market trading ebook it's totally free and then the next time i'm teaching my options webinar guess what you'll get an email but remember trading both stocks and options requires a financial education not just a hunch that music tells me my time like an option has expired i'll see you guys real soon happy trading You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode.